Well, I just got back from a fantastic week fly fishing for Atlantic salmon up in Labrador. Here's one of the most productive flies that we had during that week. A great pattern originally tied by the legendary Warren Duncan. It is a fly called the Undertaker. All right, so we're tying The Undertaker, pattern made famous by Warren Duncan. I believe Warren even originated this particular pattern. And um, there were two patterns on the uh, Big River, which is where the Big River Camp is, or Big River Lodge is located in Labrador, that were more productive than any other pattern. Um, the four patterns that were very productive were the Cozy Boom with the green body, uh, the Blue Charm, the Blue Charm Riffle, and also the Undertaker. Now, the Blue Charm, and also Silver Rat did well. A Blue Charm Riffle did very, very well, as did the Undertaker. I'm not sure which one caught more, but they probably each had uh, somewhere between seven and nine fish apiece, maybe ten. So they were real productive. All right, um, so the first thing we're going to do is start this pattern off with white thread. And you might be saying to yourself, why in the world are you using white thread? The reason is, later when we put in the two tags, um, the, the tag, I, I'm sorry, and the, the butts, we want to make sure that the, the black of the shank doesn't bleed through. So, as usual, I like to stop right on that point of the hook. I work my way back forward, and what I'm going to tie in is the tag and the tag is a flat which is kind of weird because it's usually oval a flat gold tinsel and I start by tying this on the top of the hook shank and I'm going to stop right about here and I'm going to work it down past the hook point because tags always start past the hook point I'm going to do one two and then I'm going to turn it go back in the other direction and I'm going to go all the way up to here. The reason I'm going all the way up to here, not that the tag is this long, it's not, but it'll be beneficial to block the black of the shank for bleeding through on to the butts of the fly. Alright, so there's step one. Wrap this down. It's just a thin piece of tinsel. I don't really care too much about it. Now wrap right on top of the tinsel to the point of the hook and now a trick Warren Duncan showed when I took classes with him is to really help lock in the butts so that they don't come undone after just one fish is to put this little piece of floss extending out the back and you're going to do like a wing case and fold it over in a minute and now go up along the side of the hook and there we go down and back my piece of floss is not very long so I'm going to use my finger each time I'm obnoxiously putting this in front like this what I'm doing is I'm holding it down so it doesn't slip out of my fingers which it almost did there and then cost me the whole button make me start all over again okay so there's my butt but what what what, what can happen if you lose if the fish's teeth chew into that butt or anything else is you can lose the butt easier. So one of the things Warren would do is put that piece of floss out the back and then pull it right over the top like a wing case to reinforce that tag. You'll notice I tied up onto the tag just a little bit and snip. I still have to do a red because the undertaker has a double butt if you will. Not as famous as the Mark Sanchez butt fumble but Nonetheless, a double butt, and I'm going to repeat that procedure with red now. So I put the red on, work my way all the way down to where green begins. 
and leave it over the top. There's no tail on an Undertaker. Alright, I'll put this in at the bottom. Sliding it forward. There we go. And start wrapping it down and back. Down and back prevents any holidays from showing. It does add a little bit of bulk, but you know what? That's okay. Because I watched Warren walk, Warren Duncan do it, and if Warren Duncan does it, it's okay. All right. Wrap that down. Trim off. Fold over. Lock in. And now I have my tag and my double butt all tied in. I'll work my thread forward a little bit. Don't want it to wrap around the shank. If you just heard a dog bark, that would be my lovely Ziva. That would be Ducky. He's our mini Aussie. Ziva is a Central Asian Shepherd. So a very serious dog. And Ducky's just reinforcing her call to arms on the property there. Now, we switch to a black thread. Because I don't have any more floss to worry about bleeding through on. Okay. Again, I like a loop when I work with Peacock Earl to reinforce it. Now, I'm going to wrap black over the white here, but I don't want to start the Peacock Earl exactly against the um, butt because the Peacock Earl is naturally going to spread out a little bit, and I don't want um, that spreading out to. cover up too much of that red. So, that's it. That's three of our four dogs. That was Gibbs you heard barking a second ago. Tying in the peacock girl. Notice I don't, like I don't go all the way onto the red. I stop just short of the red, right there. And then the spreading of the earl fibers. I'll take care of that. Oh, you know what I almost forgot? Wow, but I'm not going to forget. I would have been a major screw up. Uh, I for almost forgot my rib, and you really should put the rib on first. Um, I'm going to break protocol here. The rib should go on before the peacock curl does, but I will work around that. You should not do this, but I don't want to undo and redo. Of course, this pushes me right up against the butt, which is why you shouldn't do it, <laughs> but I'll improvise, adapt and overcome, Heartbreak Ridge. Okay, all right, the loop, the peacock curl, the spit, wrap them together. I'm just going to make sure I don't cover too much of the red there, which I did not, so we're okay. My little full paw, if you will, is not going to be a major boo-boo. Tighten up a little bit more. Gotta love peacock girl. Fish love peacock girl. I know that much. There we go. Over one more time. And I'm going to tie off on the bottom this time. In most salmon tying, pretty much all materials are tied off on the bottom, but I don't necessarily do that all the time because sometimes I like them on the top. Okay, opposite direction, counterwind with the oval gold tinsel medium is the size I'm choosing for this size four hook. We all know salmon go to school or swim in school, so they know that there has to be five turns of tinsel. Otherwise, they will not take your fly. Ha, ha, ha. Now, at this point, what I used to do was try to tie off right there, but it can slip a little. So what I've learned to do is wrap around a couple of times, and there will be no slippage. That's a beautiful thing. Okay. And then I just wrap the thread right on top of it. I actually think I learned that trick in a YouTube video from some of Davey McPhail's videos. He's got some really good ones if you haven't seen them yet. Okay, 
you, to the serenading of Ziva out in the back barking at some neighbor's dog, we have, probably bugging you there, it's a little bit cockeyed, what we have is um, the body of this particular fly form. Now, for the hackle, the first fly that I tied for you guys in the series of two hair wing flies had a collar hackle. This is, you can call it a beard hackle, but it's really not a beard hackle. It's the wing tied on top of a collar hackle, but the collar hackle goes before the wing. And I just tied one, and I wasn't happy with how long the fibers were. I thought they were a little extra long. So I hope I get it right this time, and I'm a little more proportional. Okay. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. I think this is going to be a good one. Now, I was a little lazy. In my opinion, the best hackle that you can get for um, herring salmon flies is the Whiting American Saddle. I think that they're just a little extra long, a little extra uniform in um, fiber length. But if you're going to come up with a close second, you can come up with the Whiting 4Bs hen saddles, which is what this is. Good fly, but if you look at the Rusty Rat video, the Rusty Rat probably has, oh, it definitely has, a little bit longer stem with fibers coming off of it. But this is a very nice feather too. So I'll do them both. Here I am folding the hackle back. Okay. Wrapping it around. Ooh. Got an eighth grader there. An eighth grader is anything that doesn't do what it's supposed to do. There we go. Ooh. And voila. Trim close. Now, something very important and very subtle in that that you probably might not have noticed. I tied that, yes, and I like the length of the sackle more. I tied it so that this part of the shank right here is completely bare. And this part of the shank here does not have peacock curl on it. If you jam that peacock curl all the way up, what will happen is the wing will kick up at an angle like this. Now, I honestly couldn't tell you what an impact that has on the final number of fish that you catch, but I like it where the wing slopes right along the body, and I do think it looks a little bit better in terms of uh, catching fish. Now, that could just be my confidence in when a fly is tied that way. So, now it's time to get out some black bear. And tie that in as in a wing. As always, pull out any underfur. Well, not always, but on this particular pattern you do. Remember the trick I showed you in the other video? Grab it really close to the tips and it'll all fit right into the stacker. Perfect. I think I mentioned before, I mentioned it on almost every video where I use this. This j -Vice stacker is just, it's the best stacker I've found for smaller fibers. All right, I like my hackle, my wing, to come right to the end of the red. So. That's what I'm going to work on doing now. Loose. Loose. The middle of the green. I'm okay with the middle of the green. That works too. I just like a shorter wing on this fly. I don't know why. I just do. I could always take it off and put it back on. But I'm okay. Now, a little touch of crazy glue. It's certainly not something done in the past, but it's an excellent way to help really lock that wing in there. And that's my wife getting home. And now 
I just have to put on two jungle cock eyes or nails as they're also known and do 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 go pick those two out I'm going to trim. I like to leave that little bit of fluff on there, and I'll explain why in just a couple of minutes when it'll become pretty obvious to you. There we go. I lay them in the sides. I don't want them pointing downward. So, as you can see, it's a very slight angle up, which is a good thing, I think. Ooh, I have two of them here. What I said, try to leave that little fluff on the end. Oh, look, I ripped it off. Oh, no. I left a little off on this one, though. A little bit showing. I look at both sides, make sure they're the same length. But the way I kind of have a really good idea that they're the same length is, if you notice, I go to right where the very beginning of the white is. And on this side, I do the same thing. I go to the very beginning of the white. So that way I know that they're the same length. And I don't have different lights on different sides. Now the reason for little, leaving a little fluff on the end, you fold back the jungle cock. Great, it came off. Uh, well, this is white on black so you can see it, and that allows you to find that for trimming purposes. And then I'll fold over the other side. Usually it doesn't break like that. I'm not sure why it did. I mean, obviously I put a little too much pressure on. Okay. Now make sure I cover the white of the jungle cock stem. And then on the back side, the white of the jungle cock stem. And right about now, I am ready to tie off. A little bit of a sloppy head, but we'll live with it. I'm not gonna, I'm going to catch fish with this. It's not gonna go in a shadow box. Okay, and the last step, a little bit of bone dry. This product put out by Solares is far superior to the old technique of putting on a bunch of layers of lacquer. Um, one shot of bone dry and a little bit of a UV light. And that will mean that the fly, that the head is better than if it had all lacquer on it. And at the same time, much, much quicker. Here's the UV light, hit it, look at the butt glow on that, so a fish seeing UV, which I hear they do, man oh man is this going to light up when it's going through the water. Maybe that's why the Undertaker was so successful. I'll take it through, go back in the other direction. For those who don't know, the Solaris is also good for your epoxy patterns. And real quick. Bone dry. All right, there's the Undertaker, Warren Duncan creation, excellent fly pattern for Atlantic salmon. And this one is different from the Rusty Rat in the sense that the Rusty Rat puts the collar above the wing. This one puts the wing above the collar. Fish it up. Have good luck with it. Take care. Bye bye.